This is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you with us on this Friday. I'm Jacqueline Matter. And I'm Ray Collins. End of the week, but the first day of a new month, September 1st, also the first day of the meteorological <laughs> fall period, which makes more sense, doesn't it? The fall should start September 1st, right? Well, it depends on your point of view. I mean, from a meteorologist's point of view, absolutely it should because uh, it actually lasts uh, through the next three months. And so climatologically, it's easier to compare seasons if you use that kind of three-month block of time. Right. Uh, but astronomically, it's <laughs> better to keep it on the 21st. Uh, nah, that's more than the information than you wanted this morning, I'm sure. We have some scattered showers out in Gulf waters, a few thunderstorms as well. They continue to press away from land over the last 15 minutes or so. So I don't expect to see this have a big impact on us. Still near the immediate coast, along barrier islands. Yeah, you may see a sprinkle this morning, but basically it's going to be after about 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon when our showers will form. That string of clouds out in Gulf waters, that is, uh, that is a tropical pressure that could bring us better weekend rains. Forecast for today, high near 90 and about a 30% rain chance. Back to you. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic will slow down there in 301 as it uh, hooks east and heads towards the Ellington area, so avoid that if you can. Farther south now on our maps into Sarasota County, you'll see an ongoing problem along the bayfront as you head from the Ringling Bridge area all the way toward the apex of 41 and 301. Also a slowdown on the uh, Siesta Key uh, Bridge after you pass the North Bridge and get to the Heigl. Ongoing issue on 75 northbound, an accident in the northbound lane there at South Creek. Be aware of that. And also one little blip on the screen southbound at, at Business 41 on this Friday morning. 6.02 this morning and topping our news this half hour. The water is finally starting to recede in Houston, but in other areas, the rivers are st still rising, forcing more residents out of their homes. And the storm has now killed 39 people, and that number is expected to rise as first responders start going door to door to check on stranded victims. ABC's Elizabeth Herr has the latest from Houston. Harvey still wreaking havoc in East Texas. This in Beaumont, where helicopters are the only way rescuers can get to the families stranded in their flooded homes and evacuate some 200 other patients from a local hospital. Hey, check that one. I'm going to check this one. In the city of Vidor, volunteers are using boats and the Army rescue trucks to get people to higher ground. I never thought it would happen to me. It always happens to somebody else, but never to you. And now it is. And in Crosby, Fire at a chemical plant as residents within a mile and a half still unable to return home with officials warning more fires are inevitable. But in other hard hit areas where Harvey has come and gone, cleanup now underway. I have the opportunity to, um, to do an aerial view of, of the city of Houston today. The Houston uh, mayor says this city is turning the corner with help from countless volunteers, including Olympic gold medalist Simone Biles. I think everyone wants to just give back as much as possible because volunteering helps, giving blood helps. Anything that we can do, we want to try to help. And residents in Rockport, where Harvey first hit, they even got help from Vice President Mike Pence in Texas Thursday, surveying the devastation. Across Texas, we are told more than 30,000 people are still in shelters, and female officials say the work has begun to get them out of these shelters and into hotels, but still no timeline as to when those residents can return home. That is, if they even have a home to return to. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Houston. Meanwhile, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission officers are continuing to help with disaster response efforts in the Houston area. FWC officers have rescued more than 500 Texans since arriving in the area after being deployed by Governor Scott. Nearly 125 FWC officers are continuing ongoing search and rescue missions today. FWC has more than 40 boats, 17 high water vehicles, two mobile command centers, and eight shallow draft vessels out in Texas. In addition, more than 400 volunteers with Volunteer Florida have been deployed to Texas and Louisiana. Volunteer Florida is also coordinating with Kellogg's to donate 200 trucks filled with food items to give to those in need. It is 6.05, developing overnight an urgent search and rescue in India after a deadly building collapse. At least 24 people are dead, and crews say they've rescued 37 others so far in Mumbai. That's India's largest city, formerly known as Bombay. 
Officials say the building had been considered unsafe back in 2013, but some families continue to live there anyway. We'll have more on the story as it develops here on ABC 7. Meanwhile, an update now out of Washington, where the State Department has announced that it's making Russia close its consulate in San Francisco. Russia will also be forced to close their two annexes in Washington and New York. This is all in response to Moscow's mandated cuts at U.S. diplomatic missions in Russia. It's the latest in a string of dueling diplomatic penalties, starting in the wake of revelations that Russia meddled in the 2016 U.S. election. At the time, then-President Obama ordered the expulsion of 35 Russian diplomats and the seizure of two Russian government compounds. And thanks to Hurricane Harvey, gas prices are at the highest they've been all year, with the national average now at uh, $2.45. The Florida average, $2.41. After Harvey came ashore in Texas, gas prices have increased 10 cents in Florida. AAA officials say you should expect gas prices to rise another nickel to dime due to tightened access to supply levels in the Gulf and Labor Day on the way next weekend. AAA says Labor Day prices at the pump this year will be the highest they've been in the past three years. A state court has ruled that Orlando State Attorney Aramis Ayala showed a misunderstanding of Florida law by not considering use of the death penalty on a case-by-case -case basis. Governor Rick Scott has taken more than 25 murder cases from Ayala and reassigned them to a different prosecutor after she said that her office would not seek the death penalty. Scott's communications director releasing a statement on the case saying until state attorney Ayala fully recants her statement that she will not seek the death penalty in any case and the governor is then convinced that crime victims will be protected and justice will be served. Our office does not plan to return any of the 29 cases that are currently being prosecuted by state attorney Brad King. State attorney Ayala needs to make it clear that her office will seek the death penalty as outlined in Florida law. New developments involving the University of Florida and a request by a white nationalist. UF officials say a group headed by white nationalist Richard Spencer is threatening legal action after the school refused to rent him space for a campus event in September. The UF president, Kent Fox, said the group has retained legal counsel and plans to pursue efforts to hold the event as requested. Fox says the university is prepared to defend its decision. UF denied the request earlier this month after the violence in Charlottesville, Virginia. A $5 billion budget request for the state university system has been approved by the Florida Board of Governors. This budget will go towards the school year beginning in August of 2018. It's a near 4% increase in state funding over this year, including a $100 million increase in performance funding for the 12 schools. The universities also outlined another $326 million in proposals that will be considered in the upcoming legislative session. Well, there was a good turnout at the Suncoast Blood Bank this week to help hospitals in Texas. Local officials were able to ship some 350 units of blood to help those in need. The local blood bank is still receiving calls, though, for more donations. You can visit scbb.org or call 866-97-BLOOD for donation location and hours of operations. Locally, a school has a fund drive not for Texas flood victims, but for flood victims here in Manatee County. Teachers, parents, and volunteers from Canaan Elementary School collected donations for those affected by floodwaters in Central Lake near 301 and Whitfield. They are collecting bottled water, cleaning supplies, snacks, and clothes. The school's PTO vice president says the support so far has been overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, I know if it was me, like, I don't know what we would do without community support. I just, I really don't know what we would do. We have five kids ourselves and couldn't even imagine being in that situation. If you would like to donate to the families of Central Lake, you can drop off donations at Canaan Elementary, which is on Talabas Road. Or you want to pass out don donations yourself tomorrow, you can join volunteers at the entrance of Central Lake, 301 near Whitfield. And while supplies are appreciated, the group is also hoping to collect more storage containers, tape, and boxes for the family. All concerns about Texas right now, and rightfully so, but we also had 22 inches of rain right. in, in that area. Places. Yeah, in Whitfield, yeah, we sure did. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we won't see anything like that this weekend, though our rain chances are going up. And hopefully Harvey was the last storm that will hit the U.S. this, this uh, hurricane season. But there is another yeah. major hurricane right. out in the Atlantic that bears watching. We'll talk about that in a minute. Thank you, John. Also still had the latest first alert traffic. And Harvey has gone away from Texas, but its effects aren't going away anytime soon. We'll have more stories on the damage there when we come back.
You got a king? Go fish! In your face! In your face! It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Hi, I'm Joan London with A Place for Mom. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families find senior care, and today's senior living communities have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms, and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And nobody understands your options like the advisors at A Place for Mom. These are local expert advisors that will partner with you to find the perfect place and determine the right level of care, whether that's just a helping hand or full-time memory care. Best of all, it's a free service. Call today, A Place for Mom. You know your family, we know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Call A Place for Mom right now to get our free ebook on financing senior care, as well as a free referral for senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-290-0352. That's 1-800-290-0352. You studied hard, went to college, and achieved your dream, but it turned into a financial nightmare. If you have federal student loans and you'd like to reduce your payments, get more time, or have your loans completely eliminated, then we have good news. With one call to Student Loan Relief Services, you can find support and guidance. We've already helped thousands of people, and we can help you too. If you have $10,000 or more in federal student loans, you can qualify for payment extensions, payment reductions, or you may qualify to have your federal student loan completely forgiven. Call Student Loan Relief Services now to find out about your options. Take control of your finances and get out from under this burden. One of our student loan experts has the answers to your questions and great solutions to ease your financial burden. We're here for you. Call Student Loan Relief Services now. Call 800-759-0203, 800-759-0203. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. Start your day with a new Good Morning Suncoast team. Weekday starting at 5 a.m. ABC 7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Lots going on in the weather department over the course of the next five days. 79 degrees, the air temperature, dew point still high at 78, making it feel warm and sticky. East wind coming in at 3 across the region. Temperatures are warm. 78, Wachula, Arcadia, Mayaka, Parish, Bradenton, along the coastline, closer to the 80 mark. If you haven't done it yet, you know, I really do recommend jumping on your, uh, your app website on your phone and uh, downloading our first alert weather forecast app. It's going to be, I think, useful this weekend as we're going to see these kinds of pops of lightning that you're seeing here with these red Conta red uh, crosses on the um, on the map here, the radar map. That you're going to see a lot more of those as we head into the weekend. We have a good chance of seeing some fairly heavy rainfall, and there certainly could even be some periods, brief periods of for potentially severe weather over the course of uh, the weekend, especially on Saturday. Though it's not really forecast, you can always see a severe storm pop up when you have multiple thunderstorms around, and I think that's what we'll see tomorrow. Harvey continues to lift off to the north, decreasing in intensity, gradually drifting to the east. There, there is the potential for this to be a, a, a 10 inch rainmaker in parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, and as it moves into the Ohio Valley as well. Uh, probably another four to four and a half, five inches of rainfall possible today as it continues to rain itself out. Locally, we've had a few scattered thunderstorms off the coastline, but this trough of low pressure back to the west is advancing, and that will bring us much better rain chances as we head into tomorrow. We can just about double the rain chance tomorrow that we will see today. 
And today we're just about doubling it from yesterday. So you see the trend. Uh, showers and thunderstorms out in Gulf waters currently may skirt the coastline briefly, but they should die out in place there before reestablishing themselves later this afternoon as we build our sea breeze later today at 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. There's a little trough of low pressure kind of associated with our low that gradually drifts closer to us and brings us those better rain chances for today. Scattered afternoon storms, more rain tomorrow. And then we watch the tropics about 3,000 miles away, particularly for Irma, but there's one system below it that may develop as well. So we're watching both of them, really. But Irma in particular, a major hurricane forecast to move westward beyond the five-day official hurricane uh, center forecast track. It's really hard to know where this system is going. But by Wednesday, it could threaten the leeward or windward islands as a major hurricane possibly. Potentially this could go to a category 5 hurricane and some of the longer range computer models put it into our near Atlantic as a major hurricane eight days down the road. So by late next week uh, the United States could be talking about impact from a major hurricane as well. It's too early to tell there's going to be a lot of error in the forecast track that far out. But boy, are we going to be watching this storm midweek next week to know exactly where its location is and what the latest track forecast is as well. 50% chance of showers tomorrow, decreasing rain chances starting Sunday and into Monday and Tuesday. And then, of course, by Wednesday, we're watching the tropics carefully. Back to you. All right. Thank you, John. Taking a look at your first alert traffic in Manatee County this morning, State Road 70 and 301, seeing the normal congestion as it does as your morning commute gets underway. Also, the Green Bridge heading into downtown Bradenton, seeing some more cars on the roadway. And in Sarasota County, Bee Ridge and Clark Road, seeing some congestion, as well as that ongoing slowdown towards uh, the Bayfront in Sarasota, I-75 looking clear until you get towards about I-75 northbound at South Creek. There is an accident in that direction, but Business 41 throughout Venice and Nokomis looking pretty good at 617 on your Friday morning. Well, the rain may be gone, but the cleanup is just starting in Houston and the rest of the Texas coastline. Yeah, some parts of the area saw as much as 50, five zero inches of rain. Imagine just moving to that area from Florida weeks ago. Well, that's the case of a friend of our station, Don Schuler, who now joins us live on the phone from Sugarland. Don, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, well, uh, you know, aside from it being a little bit early, <laughs> uh, I'm good. Yeah, time zone difference is yeah. 518 there. So, yeah, thanks for being here. So, just to back up, so you moved to Sugarland from uh, Broward County a few weeks ago, right? That's correct. And this is the welcome you've received in the Lone Star State. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I have friends back in Florida who are telling me that it's my fault uh, that I brought the storm with me and, and all kinds of other uh, <laughs> weather-related humor. But, yeah. So what are conditions uh, like where, where you're living right now? What does it look like? Well, um, and, and I've... I've, I've said this to many, many friends in the last few days. Um, where I'm at in Sugar Land, we were really, really lucky. Um, there's no other way to put it. Um, the elevation here is a little bit higher. Um, we're not near, with the exception of being uh, the south, south end of Sugar Land being near the Brazos River, which is one of the um, major, main drainage points for, for where all of this water is going, um, we're not really located near either of the reservoirs um, and uh, any of the other drainage type um, outlets um, that, that uh, Harris County, which is uh, the city of Houston, uses. But the Brazos River, um, which is on the south end of Fort Bend County, um, is one of those drainage outlets. And um, there are parts of um, Sugar Land and, and some of the outlying suburbs that are still um, underwater. So how much warning did you have? Did, I mean, coming from Broward County, you know how the meteorologists in South Florida are always on top of these uh, situations. Did you folks have any idea there was a situation coming like this? Well, we knew there was a storm coming. Um, uh, like, like like uh, you know, um, meteorologists in Florida, 
um, folks here take hurricanes very seriously, and they did a really, really good job of getting people prepared, um, you know, uh, round-the-clock weather alerts, uh, even signage on, on the major highways here in the area, um, you know, kind of telling people, hey, there's a storm coming, get ready. Uh, so they did a pretty good job. Um, what nobody really expected was the amount of water we got. Don, I have one last question for you. What is it like to see some of your neighbors completely underwater, the, the state of Texas um, dealing with some of these uh, devastating uh, times and situations? Well, it, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, of being in South Florida um, <laughs> after Andrew back in 92. Just the way people have come together um, have, and, and, and just put themselves out there, um, it, it's, it's really, it kind of gives you a lot of faith in humanity. Well, good, Don. we got to um, cut you short right there, I'm afraid. But thank you so much for waking up early, and we appreciate your perspective from the Lone Star State. We certainly Not do. a problem. Okay, thank you again for your time. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, there's a new fear in the Harvey flood zone. That's right. We'll tell you why officials are worried about residents getting electrocuted when we come back. So many possibilities worth exploring. Minnesota flooring. Looking for carpet? Look no further. Minnesota flooring has smart strand carpet as low as $1.79 per square foot. Installed, no add-ons or extras. Unbelievable? Minnesota flooring can have in-stock carpet installed in your home in 48 hours for as low as $1.99 per square foot. Don't miss these prices. Visit Minnesota flooring today. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now. Make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-685-6422. 800-685-6422. ABC7 is gearing up for the 2017 Suncoast Heart Walk on Saturday, September 9th here at Nathan Benderson Park, and we'd love for you to join us. This rewarding, family-friendly day is the American Heart Association's signature event for raising funds to help fight heart disease and stroke. Walk with us September 9th to help save lives, have fun, and help your heart. For more information, visit suncoastheartwalk.org. Hurricane season is here, and so is the ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Sun Coast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with your pets, and important phone numbers. Visit MySunCoast.com and download the ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide. Brought to you by Batteries Plus, the Florida Lottery, and Sarasota Glass and Mirror. It's rainy season on the Sun Coast. Storms can pop up at a moment's notice. Sometimes it's just rain. Sometimes it's much worse. When there's the potential for severe weather, you need to know fast. Trust ABC7 First Alert Weather to get you the information you need right away. We focus on the storms that impact where you live, and we're committed to alerting you with important information as soon as we get it. When severe weather strikes, trust ABC7 First Alert Weather. We're here for you. We've been busy adding content to our respective uh, pages, so feel free to check out Ray, Jacqueline, and John's respective ABC7 pages. Like them if you can. Yeah, well, send us some of your pictures uh, if, you, if you take any this weekend for the Labor Day weekend holiday. Um, love to see what you guys are out doing. Hopefully, you know, John says uh, probably not likely, but hopefully that rain will hold off. But if you are doing anything fun, we'd love to see some of those cookouts and what you're doing to honor Labor Day. 
625 on your Friday morning. There's a new concern in the aftermath of Harvey. It's submerged power lines. We have fears over possible electrocution rising now in the flood zone. ABC's Diane Macedo has a story. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new threat in the floodwaters. Andrew Pasek, returning to this Houston neighborhood to look for his sister's cat, stepped into his family's flooded yard, unaware the water had been electrified. His mother, Jodell, says he used his last words to warn his friend, Sean. It's a danger many displaced residents and rescue workers face as they make their way through the flooded streets, on foot or by boat. Two volunteer rescuers were reportedly killed and two more are reportedly missing after their boat was electrocuted by submerged power lines. These reporters from DailyMail.com who were with them managed to survive after a harrowing 18 hours. I was not going to let the bayou be my, my resting spot. That stinky bayou. No way. And we'll have more on their incredible story coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Diane Macedo, ABC News, New York. My day starts well before I'm in the kitchen. I need my blood sugar to stay in control. I need to shave my A1C. I'm always on call. An insulin that fits my schedule is key. Traceba ready. Traceba is used to control high blood sugar in adults with diabetes. Don't use Traceba to treat diabetic ketoacidosis during episodes of low blood sugar or if you are allergic to any of its ingredients. Don't share needles or insulin pens. Don't reuse needles. The most common side effect is low blood sugar, which may cause dizziness, sweating, confusion, and headache. Check your blood sugar. Low blood sugar can be serious and may be life-threatening. Injection site reactions may occur. Tell your prescriber about all medicines you take and all your medical conditions. Taking TZDs with insulins like Traceba may cause serious side effects like heart failure. Your insulin dose shouldn't be changed without asking your prescriber. Get medical help right away if you have trouble breathing, fast heartbeat, extreme drowsiness, swelling of your face, tongue, or throat, dizziness, or confusion. Ask your healthcare provider if you're Traceva Ready. Covered by most insurance and Medicare plans. Traceva Ready. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our Autumn Upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Attention blood thinner users. If your loved one took Xarelto or Pradaxa and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. The widely prescribed blood thinners Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to a number of dangerous side effects, including internal bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, kidney bleeding, stroke, brain hemorrhaging, and even death. If you or a loved one suffered any of these injuries after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, call right now. You may be owed significant compensation from the menu. Manufacturer. Thousands of blood thinner users may have been exposed to serious risk by these dangerous medications. If you or loved one took Xarelto or Pradax and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. If we don't win, there is no fee. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-554-3987. Again, that's 1-800-554-3987. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Uh, Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. 
Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Coming up on Good Morning Sun Coast, new details in the death of Snooty the Manatee, why staff at the South Florida Museum may have been to blame. Plus, a new way to fly from Sarasota to the New York City area. We'll have details of a new direct flight. And as the destruction from Harvey continues, Sun Coast residents open their hearts and pocketbooks to help families in need. Those stories and more right now on Good Morning Sun Coast. Live from the ABC 7 studios, this is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. And good morning to you. It is Friday, 631, September 1st. Pretty shot there of the dawn about to break over the Rosemary District. Pretty blue sky out Looks there. Looks very nice out there. Deep blue. Not quite a blue sky in the... Anyway, <laughs> let's get to the forecast now. Good morning, John Scalzi. Good morning. Had a few flashes of lightning out there this morning. Yeah. Things have kind of quieted down just a little bit, but there are still some scattered showers around. And for your morning commute, if you're along the uh, along the immediate coastline, along out there on the uh, Longbow Key Islands, or you might see an isolated shower too, particularly Anna Maria Holmes Beach, Upper Longbow Key. You might see uh, perhaps a brief sprinkle. Showers and thunderstorms. The thunderstorms should stay out in Gulf waters for the most part. Looking at quiet conditions across all our roadways right now. We have a line of clouds out in the central gulf. That's part of a trough of low pressure that could bring us better chances for weekend rains. Going to be talking about that in just a few minutes. 90 are high. All right, thank you. Talk to you soon. Checking first alert traffic right now. State Road 70 showing some issues on either side of the interstate. In the far lower right corner of your screen, perhaps you can see it behind the ABC7 logo, you see some issues in both directions in front of the Walmart Plaza there. Sarasota County, some problems on 41 northbound as you head from B Ridge towards Siesta Drive and Weber. Farther south now on the map, you'll see uh, nothing to speak of. In fact, that earlier issue on 75 has since cleared up. 632 on your Friday morning. Topping our news this half hour, the South Florida Museum in Bradenton is officially taking responsibility for the death of Snooty the Manatee. Yeah, the museum released a report yesterday and it said that the staff members knew a panel in Snooty's aquarium was loose for a week before he died. It turns out they had observed issues with the door, but failed to make the necessary repairs before the accident happened. The, the breakdowns, which were communication, reporting, and, and there was some action, but there, there wasn't complete follow through. And we have now changed all that in terms of building in new uh, cross training staff, building new pol uh, procedures and, and, um, and a new reporting system that has redundancies to build that safety net so it does not happen again. And one more big change, the museum confirmed that Marilyn Margold, the aquarium's director when Snooty died, no longer works for the museum. Floodwaters still have not subsided for several communities along the Mayaka River in Venice. Sarasota County Emergency Management and Red Cross crews were on hand to help those affected yesterday. They set up portable toilets and provided water and snacks. At its height, the floodwaters were three to four feet deep in some areas. And while the flooding has since gone down, they still have a long way to go. In the meantime, neighbors are coming together to support each other. It's really a neighbors helping neighbors experience. We've had uh, folks come up in their 4 by 4 trucks and picking up water to take it back to their neighbors that are in there. Uh, as you can see, the two ladies on the horses, they actually came to the canteen and took some water and snacks and actually used their horses to go through the neighborhood to deliver uh, supplies to anybody in need. Emergency management officials say they will continue to provide water and other services as needed today and throughout the weekend. And just as a reminder that with more rain expected this weekend, Manatee County and the city of Bradenton are handing out more sandbags today. Sandbags will be available through the county at Buffalo Creek Park, GT Bray Park, Lakewood Ranch Park, and the Rubonia Community Center from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And Bradenton residents can stop by the city's Public Works and Utilities Department at 1411 9th Street West from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. A group opposed to the new Florida law regarding the death penalty protested in the streets of Sarasota yesterday afternoon. They don't agree with the Florida Supreme Court decision to have juries vote unanimously in order to impose the death penalty on convicted murderers. This could give many murderers new sentencing trials. 
The protest was specifically about a new sentencing hearing for Joseph Smith, who will get a new phase for the 2004 murder of Sarasota's Carly Brucia. One of Carly's friends says it's not fair Smith could be taken off death row and have a sentence reduced to life in prison. I just feel like I get that they changed the law and that's for future perpetrators, but I feel like he's been on death row for how many years now? And he was sentenced to that for a reason. And he's now getting off because they decided to change the law, you know, 10 plus years later. Yeah, by a 10-2 vote, the jury gave Smith the death penalty for the rape and murder of the 11-year-old Brucia. But this past July, the Florida Supreme Court ruled Smith will get a new sentencing trial. A local psychologist is hoping to help students better handle life situations. The program is called Social Black Belt, and it's designed to teach students what program founder Dr. Christopher Cortland calls the 10 basic truths. It's all about teaching the students how to handle real world issues such as bullying, divorce, and loss. Your emotions are not these. The, these invaders from another planet that you can't control. And we teach that in our society. Well, you can't change how you feel. Yeah, you actually can because you create your own feelings by the way you perceive reality. The program has the support of school board member Eric Robinson. The Sarasota School District has allocated $200,000 for that program. And after months of searching, Manatee County area transit officials are still in need of more than a dozen drivers. The effort has been ongoing since May, and 16 more operators are still needed to fully staff the bus operations workforce. All new bus operators are required to complete operations and safety training, which can take up to 10 weeks. For more information, you can call the number on your screen or see our link on mysuncoast.com to apply. And speaking of transportation, there's a new way to get from Sarasota to New York City. SRQ announced a new direct flight. Beginning November 10th, there will be Friday and Monday flights to White Plains, New York, about 40 minutes north of Manhattan. The cost will be $179 each way. Elite Airways currently has flights at SRQ to Portland, Maine and to Canada. They'll add another destination from SRQ in the next few weeks. Happening today, Sarasota's Temple Emanuel is kicking off what they're calling Houston Week. The week is devoted to raising funds for the people of Houston, as well as collecting clothes and other supplies to be handed out where they're needed. Their event tonight will also give donors the chance to make a personal card that will be mailed to flood victims in Houston. It all starts at 530 at 151 McIntosh Road and runs until next Friday when you can still make donations. It's 6.38 this morning, and there was a different approach to the fight against drugs last night as hundreds took to the streets of Bradenton for International Overdose Awareness Day. And our Rick Adams was there. Well, hundreds of folks did attend this event, a lot of them with a personal connection to this issue, and many of them carrying a sign like this. The turnout was huge for International Overdose Awareness Day in Bradenton. Many of the folks participating knows of someone who has lost their life because of a drug overdose or has been through an overdose themselves. Christy is someone who has overcome drug addiction and is helping out with an organization called COPE International. She and many others felt a need to participate. It's everybody just working in the right direction of correcting this problem that we have that are wrecking so many people's lives. Tracy Longinus runs the His Girls Discipleship Recovery Program. She and others from her group were walking for a young female who died far too young. It's heartbreaking, it's horrifying. Um, these are people that are hurting. Participants walked many blocks up and down 14th Street West holding signs and remembering the many lives lost from drug overdoses. The Suncoast Harm Reduction Project helped organize this event. They were handing out free Narcan kits to help do their part. For Manatee County to have this many overdose deaths and, and to literally be number one per capita in the state, it's kind of unacceptable and we want to change that. The word's getting out there that, you know, we need to recognize this as a problem and hopefully get rid of the stigma involved with um, substance abuse and substance use disorders. Royce felt it was important to share this walk with his son. Several years ago, he had a brother-in-law that died from this. We're trying to wa raise awareness for uh, trying to prevent future deaths and overdoses. And organizers say this is the third year they've done this event and they do plan on doing this event again next year. Reporting from Bradenton, I'm Rick Adams, ABC7, your Suncoast News. 
So tonight you're out in the football field again. Yeah, tonight is Football Friday. Yeah. But last week it was canceled because of the rain. What can we expect tonight? You know, you have to be uh, watchful for a few scattered showers and maybe a thunderstorm or two tonight. Okay. So, you know, it might be a good time to download the uh, First Alert app. Of course. Right, with uh, lightning tracking and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Keep, an, uh, keep an eye on stuff. Uh, over the weekend, we'll even have more chances of showers and thunderstorms. We'll talk about that in a sec. All right. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, the latest in your First Alert traffic. And across the country, the average parenting age for men has been on the rise. We'll tell you how being an older father could impact the relationship with your child when we come back. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. You love your couch and want to protect it from spills, food, and scratching, shedding pets. Introducing Couch Coat, the reversible, washable quilted cover that protects your couch. Shield against spills, wow, stop stains, and dirty pet paws and sharp claws. Plus, it's reversible with two stylish colors. Guaranteed to fit any couch up to 92 inches or your money back. It even has covers to protect armrests. Machine washable too. My grandkids destroy everything but with couch coat my coach is always protected looking as good as it did the day I bought it get your couch coat for just $19.99 and it's reversible in brown and cream like two couch coats for the price of one order right now and you can double your offer get a second couch coat just pay a separate fee order right now Call 1-800-943-0710 to get your couch coat. Call now or go to couchcoat.com. So call 1-800-943-0710. That's 1-800-943-0710. Call now. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. My name is Luke Perry and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Game on, Suncoast. Get scores and highlights from the area's top high school matchups on Football Friday Night, just after the news at 11.15. Sponsored by your local Honda dealers. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Current conditions kind of sticky out there with the dew point value coming in high at about 78. East wind coming in at about 5. And we do have a little bit of cloud cover out there because of some shower and thunderstorm activity out in Gulf waters. But over land, things are pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of activity during the overnight. So your morning commute except along the immediate coastline from Anna Maria down through about Upper Longboat Key should be dry. Uh, even in those locations where you might get a brief passing shower, no big deal really. 78 degrees in Wachula, Arcadia, Mayaka, Parrish, Bradenton, you get the picture. Pretty much in the upper 70s, most everywhere east of the interstate or close to. And then right along the immediate coastline, a little bit warmer coming in near the 80 degree mark. We have uh, Harvey, of course, continuing to degrade, but still raining pretty hard. Could get an additional four inches, bringing total amounts of rainfall with this storm in parts of the Ohio Valley, stretching back into the front range as much as 10 inches. And that'll be the case as it moves toward the east coast. It'll continue to rain itself out. The trailing trough of low pressure out in Gulf waters could provide us with some additional weekend rains as it inches closer to our coastline by tomorrow. It'll stall out and it could provide a potential situation where you get one shower after another after another over the same location, that kind of scenario that we saw 
a week ago when we got 22 inch rainfalls. Well, we won't see any rainfalls like that. But North Florida will get a bullseye for heavier rain showers, and they can certainly pick up two, three, four inches of rainfall in some locations to the north of us. Now, locally, we won't see four inch rainfalls, I don't think. But we will see scattered showers and thunderstorms around, particularly tomorrow. Seen a few out in Gulf waters this morning. And as I mentioned, some of the coastal um, areas could see a brief passing shower or a light rain. Most of the stuff located out in Gulf waters. Harvey continues to open up and move away. The trough low pressure approaches. Our atmosphere continues to moisten. We'll have more clouds around tomorrow. Uh, we'll have uh, a strong onshore wind flow developing. Boaters, pay attention to tomorrow's forecasts before you go out of port. Could be some thunderstorms out there as well. And, of course, you know seas get high fast in the vicinity of thunderstorms. Scattered showers, more rain tomorrow. And then we're carefully watching the tropics next week. Still a good deal away from the state of Florida. We have two systems that we monitor. One further to the south bears watching as well, though it hasn't developed yet. It does have a potential of about 50% once it reaches this area of the Atlantic. To the north of that, Irma has developed rapidly during the uh, last 48 hours. It's kind of leveled off just a little bit now. The center eye wall kind of filling with clouds. I think it's probably undergoing an eye wall replacement cycle, which happens with these larger hurricanes and uh, it'll probably redevelop with a larger eye wall and then start to gain intensity once again. There's dry air to the north which is a limiting factor. There's some moderately warm water that it's moving over. Another moderating factor. 115 mile an hour winds that continues to drift toward the west maybe threatening the leeward and windward islands as we head into next week, midweek next week, Wednesday. So we'll continue to watch that as that system moves off into the Atlantic, most likely, forecast model tracks tend to push it a little further to the north today than they did yesterday. 40% chance of rain on Sunday, decreasing rain chances beginning of next work week. Watch the tropics midweek next week. All right, thank you, John. Taking a look at first alert traffic, State Road 70 in both directions, seeing some slowdowns. Also, it looks like uh, the road from Ellington into Bradenton, seeing some slowdowns heading in that direction. I-75 looking clear as we head into Sarasota County. Some slowdowns on 41 heading north and southbound, but Fruitville, Bee Ridge, and Clark Road are looking pretty clear. South County seeing some congestion as you head northbound towards Business 41 into Venice. But other than that, no accidents at 648 on your Friday morning. In this hour's Health Smart, George Clooney is a father of newborns at the age of 56. Larry King became a dad again at 66. And Mick Jagger even had another kid at 73. So what effect does being an older dad have on new kids? ABC's Emily Rao has more. Seeing more middle-aged men pushing strollers? That's not grandpa, it's dad. Dads, whether white, black, Asian, or Hispanic, are getting older in America, a situation that experts say has its pros and cons. Researchers at Stanford University conducting a study looking at all recorded births since 1972 found that the average father of a newborn is now 31 years old, an all-time high. Asian dads of newborns the oldest at 36 years of age. This older age may come with consequences. While advanced age in moms is linked to diseases like Down syndrome, advanced paternal age is linked to a higher risk of autism and mental illness. But an encouraging trend regardless of age. The percentage of births to a known father are on the rise, and a dad's name on the birth certificate is linked to a lower rate of infant death. With this Medical Minute, I'm Emily Rao, ABC News. Entertainment news. Who will be on Dancing with the Stars this season? Well, this guy will be. Who's that? He is one of the stars of a show on HGTV called Property Brothers. He'll be dancing this time. Drew Scott will be taking up real estate in the dance floor. He'll be paired with Emma Slater, who won the Mirror Ball last time with football player Rashad Jennings. The rest of the cast will be announced on Wednesday here on ABC7. And Beyonce's sister Solange Knowles has announced a couple of benefit concerts to raise money for Hurricane Harvey victims. She's a Houston native, after all, and the latest entertainer to pledge support. The shows are September 20th in Boston and October 3rd in New York. By the way, we're doing a Facebook Live at 8 o'clock this right. morning. If you're by your computer at 8 o'clock or your phone, of course, we'll be uh, giving some weekend ideas, things to do, and some behind-the-scenes peeks of the show. Yeah. 
10 to 7 right now. Still ahead, we'll update your top headlines and a new Guinness World Record in Canada. We'll tell you how long one man sat with these bees on his face. Oh my, when we come back. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or heaven forbid replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Attention blood thinner users. Thousands of blood thinner users may have been exposed to serious risk by these dangerous medications. If you or loved one took Xarelto or Pradax and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. If we don't win, there is no fee. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-554-3987. Again, that's 1-800-554-3987. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Are you getting the most out of your Medicare plan? Are you sure? Many people with Medicare are eligible for plans that include extra benefits in addition to those found in original Medicare. Benefits like dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll. The consultation is free with no obligation to enroll. In addition to hospital and medical coverage, at no extra cost, you could also get coverage for prescription drugs, dental, hearing, vision, and more. In many areas, plans with benefits are available with $0 copays for many services, $0 monthly premiums, or $0 deductibles. That's hospital, medical, prescription drug, dental coverage, and more included in one plan with premiums that may be as low as $0 a month. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll. The consultation is free and there's no obligation to enroll. Call 1-800-620-2254. That's 1-800-620-2254. The American Red Cross has mobilized a massive relief effort to provide shelter, food, and comfort to the victims of Hurricane Harvey. They will continue to be there in the weeks and months ahead, helping residents recover from this massive storm. Please help people affected by Hurricane Harvey by visiting redcross.org, calling 1-800-RED-CROSS, or texting the word HARVEY to 90999 to make a $10 donation. Donations enable the Red Cross to prepare for, respond to, and help people recover from this disaster. Thank you. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. The ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide arms you with vital information when severe weather threatens the Sun Coast. Visit mysuncoast.com and download yours today. Look at this beautiful picture of the Bradenton River Walk from our downtown camera. Very nice traffic building in that area, but a beautiful cotton candy sky on this Friday morning. Look at the palm trees, too. I know, love it. Almost picturesque. Almost. <laughs> I can go one step further. It's, that's picturesque. 6.54 on your Friday morning. Well, let's take a look at some of the top news on the Sun Coast today. The South Florida Museum now says the death of their prize exhibit was preventable. They admit staff noticed a faulty trap door in the manatee's tank, but repairs were not made, and Snooty got stuck and drowned some five weeks ago. Plus, people are upset about the idea of a new sentencing trial for Carly Bruce's killer protesting on the streets of Sarasota yesterday. Now that the state is requiring death penalty verdicts be unanimous, the little girl's killer, Joseph Smith, will leave death row and return to Sarasota as early as next year to face a new sentencing. And Elite Airlines will now offer direct flights from Sarasota to White Plains, New York. White Plains is about 25 miles north of Manhattan.
Taking a look at your first alert traffic this morning, it is building throughout Manatee County on 301. It looks like State Road Sony looking pretty good. I-75 clear as we head into Sarasota County. Your biggest slowdowns are on 41 heading southbound, and it looks like Fruitville and Bee Ridge Road seeing some more congestion. South County looking pretty quiet at 655 on your Friday morning, John. Chance of rain showers today, better than yesterday. Tomorrow, better still, and we're watching the tropics next week. All right, look at this one. A new Guinness World Record in Houston. Make that Toronto, rather. All the man had to do was wear a beard of bees for over an hour. That looks like more than a beard. <laughs> That's a full-body bee. The brave man behind all those wings and stingers is an employee at a honey farm in Ontario. He says he only practices twice. Practiced it. How do you practice? He did get a few stings in the process, but his time beats the previous record by almost eight minutes. Why? Why? What? <laughs> I don't even I know. I can't imagine that. That would be <laughs> millions of dollars. I wouldn't do that one. No. He's on no. TV today. That's why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great. We'll see you on mm. Facebook Live at 8 o'clock on the ABC7 Facebook page. Otherwise, have yeah. a great Labor Day weekend. And we hope to see you at Music on Main tonight in Lakewood Ranch as well. Stick around. Good morning, America. It's coming up next.